Hi, I'm Tara Howard. I'm from Agolfin County, and I teach at Sayersville Grade School. And I did some research and found out that students spend about one-third of their days in a classroom setting, and most of that is at a traditional desk and chair. And so I really wanted to get students moving, get them engaged, get them motivated, see more collaboration, and so I decided to implement a classroom redesign. So there's my process. Um, I just briefly, um, I went through um, observing student behavior and engagement, and I thought I was pretty sure I could improve, so um, I reflected on that. I interviewed my students and asked them what they would like to see in our classroom. And you will get to hear from them in just a little bit. And I conducted some research. I did uh, planned. Um, and then the implementation, I observed after and interviewed the students and the results, um, in my opinion, were phenomenal. Although we know a lot of things, uh, there are a lot of variables, so I can't pinpoint exactly, but I do know it has increased um, their knowledge so um, <clears throat> why mess with tradition? A lot of people say it worked when I was a kid. When I was in school, we sat at a desk. I turned out okay. Um, I'm teaching these students now. So why would I do anything differently? But it's not that that is a bad thing. And I still have students in my classroom that like to sit at you know, the traditional desk. But I have many that that wasn't really working for them. And so research says if a student has ineffective teaching for three consecutive years, it's really astonishing that they can lose 40 to 60 percentile points, and we know how much that is. I mean, that's quite a bit. And so if you have a student that it's not working for them, and that continues to happen over the course of three years, I mean, it's a snowball effect. They're not going to get that back. But at the same time, if we reach that child, it's kind of like compound interest. It's going to keep getting better and better. So. So what does the research say? It says that alternative seating improves attention spans. They become more engaged. It also helps students burn more calories. They're moving. It releases those feel-good chemicals in the brain. And it's great for ADHD, special needs students, sensory processing issues, and it addresses that kinesthetic learner. And so we want to produce an environment conducive to collaborative learning. That's, that was the goal. And so why isn't everyone doing it? Well, money because it was expensive. The paint was very expensive. So I have to thank KVEC and ARI funding. Also, fear and skepticism. It is really difficult to go to your administrator and say, hey, I want to basically tear my room apart <laughs> and get a bunch of um, stability ball chairs and have my kids bouncing around. And, and you think, well, what if this doesn't work? And then everyone walks by my room and my kids are just, they can't, they can't handle it. You know, that's, that's kind of the first thing that's in your mind. And so... Um, there is a little bit of fear with it and, and buying that kind of goes hand in hand. But um, I decided to try it. Uh, all of the, the research that I did was saying that it was going to be a good thing. So, okay, so we know what research says. What about the teacher next door? So my results, um, the students stated that they enjoyed the newly designed space. Um, you'll get to hear from them in a minute, but I had them lining up in the hallway, something that was new for me, and they were like, just, I mean, they just wanted to just run into my class. And I was like, wow, <laughs> this is awesome. I mean, it's, it's a good feeling to know that students are so eager to come into your classroom. And so um, student disruptions less frequent than at the beginning of the school year. So this project took place. I actually uh, did the redesign over Christmas break. That gave me enough time for the paint to dry and things like that. <clears throat> so I kind of compared from the beginning of the year to um, after Christmas. And uh, so far, it's going great. Um, they are more engaged, for sure. And collaboration, they started out the year kind of um, only talking really when they shouldn't be or, you know, <laughs> talking about things they shouldn't be, not necessarily their work. But now I notice they are really working together. They teach each other. Um, I mean, it's amazing. Some of the students that I never dreamed um, would get up and go and make the move to teach other students they're moving around and helping one another. So... The outcome on mastery, uh, we know many factors can contribute, so I can't really say for sure because it, w it is not that alone, but I mean, it has made a difference in my classroom. When engagement increases, collaboration inc increases, uh, students can learn from other students, sometimes better than a teacher. They kind of can speak each other's language. And so I do know that it has had a positive impact. Okay. So I know these pictures look really weird. Here's the thing. When I got my grant, um, I ordered my stuff, and I got so excited, I forgot before pictures. So this is really all I had. Like um, that, I, I took the cubbies out of my room. I teach fourth and fifth grade, and they, ch they switch classes, so there wasn't a need for cubbies. So I wanted to take that wall out, and you'll see what happened to it in a minute. I mean, 
take the cubbies off that wall. And um, this, they look like they're in pain. <laughs> and I know it looks like they really hate my classroom, but we were doing, um, if you've ever heard of Bean Boozled, uh, the jelly beans, you know, those that taste like skunk spray and things like that. We were doing that with integers, and that's why you see those faces. It's not that bad in my room, I promise. <laughs> so that's what it looked like before, sort of. It's kind of messy. So transitional phase. I took those cubbies off, and... I began painting this wall with dry, dry erase paint. And so now we can write on the wall. And so that was the beginning. I'm over there on the edge of the picture painting. And so I've painted this massive amount of space that we can use now. I can see the kids working along the wall. I can see them all around the room. And, and there's a lot of open space. <clears throat> and uh, I used to think paint dry erase. Um, futon. Got a little futon. Um, they really enjoy that. Um, I have a dry erase table, so the kids that aren't at the wall, a lot of them like to sit at the table and work, do their math on my table, and um, butterfly chair, I got a few of those. A standing desk, some kids don't like to sit, so they have the option, and they have the stability ball they can kind of push out of the way. If they decide they're tired of standing, they have that, so. And so I have a tech area, it has a 3D printer, Xbox, which is pretty cool, and uh, I use Minecraft and math, so it kind of goes with it, and um, I'm still in the process of getting all of my room together, but this is the majority. I have a reading corner, so that's another space. They like the little TP, and, and they like those little areas, and, and it gives some of the students that need that quiet time. Sometimes they, they need to step away, and, and that's a good little area to go to, and so here they are, and um, they're working. This is a typical day in my classroom. And so I have quite a few pictures of this, but. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna have my students come up. If you want to ask me any questions, how long it took, um, anything about the paint, how long it takes to dry, what it's like cleaning it, because I didn't actually smooth the wall out. I painted a block wall and I, I mean, that was a risk, but I thought it was just cooler. So it takes a little more effort to clean, but I wouldn't have done it any other way. But my students can come on up and if you want to ask them any questions or me. Yeah. All right. And if not, they can just talk about it a little bit. Yes. I'm interested in how you clean that block wall. Okay. So the paint came with a kit. It was like an alcohol-based cleaner. And it does, uh, from time to time, get in the little, you know, little grooves and things, but we keep it clean, we keep it clean, and um, any little spot, it doesn't really bother us if we, if we miss a spot, I mean, it's worth it, um, but um, an option would be to actually put, um, use a trowel and kind of smooth your wall out or put some plywood up, I mean, you could do it another way, but they really like painting on the wall, it just seems more like a cool thing to do, um, any other questions? What do you have to say about the classroom? Do you like it? Say what you like about it. I think that the physical education helps us develop as children and it helps us focus and it helps us uh, where we're in groups of four or three, or sometimes even two. We help each other learn as a group and not individual, but it's good to learn individual too. Um, my favorite part about the classroom is probably the standing desk because some kids don't like to sit down when they want to they want to move around. Um, Are you finished? Okay. Jaden, do you have anything? Christian? My favorite is a stability ball because while we're sitting, we can still move around. Move around a little. Any other questions? No, you're fine. Are you... I actually teach math and science. I don't teach everything. No, we're we're departmental. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if that's all, thank you very much.